So this is a captured nat natural selection at work where the wolves are picking out who they're going to uh, go after. But of course, that isn't really the way it works. Um, well, maybe there is. If there's one obviously sick or slow or old or young member of a herd, then they may very well target that one because that one's least likely to survive the attack and they want to eat it. But that's how this works. Their nature and they are selecting through their predation, the winners and the losers. Uh, but that was the last thing on the list of uh, what makes things alive. Now we're going to talk about something that folks have trouble agreeing on. A lot of you will recognize this. This is one of the pictures you keep seeing of uh, SARS coronavirus uh, 2, COVID-19, 19 because it was discovered in 2019. Uh, Coronavirus 2, because it's very slightly changed from uh, the SARS virus that went around uh, Asia 17 years ago. Excuse me, it's so similar that people that um, are immune to COVID-1 or SARS-1 uh, look like they're pretty much immune to SARS-2 17 years later. So for us folks with the antibodies, we're going to be good for a while. Is that a uh, Antibodies are not the be all and the end all. So what are we talking about here? Viruses. I'll tell you a little bit about how a virus works. Remember, take down as much as you need to take down in order to remember this. Viruses are um, some sort of coding in the case of uh, COVID, it's got RNA, which is related to DNA. It's another coding. It's a middleman coding molecule in our cells. We'll learn about that later in the semester. And it's got, um, I think, one uh, enzyme that it carries inside the casing. The casing itself is stolen from the cell that made the viruses. So it's, um, it's a membrane-like casing, which means it's easily disrupted by detergents. That's why washing with soap helps to, uh, the virus. A lot of viruses have protein-based casings, and you can make them fall apart with alcohol and disinfectants, but you can't really, um, soap doesn't really do that much to them. Some of them are very, um, very good surviving uh, drying out. Flu viruses are, uh, that's why they pass in dry indoor conditions real easily. Uh, these guys, yet to be determined how effectively these survive drying out. COVID's. These things sticking out are a type of protein. It is um, what they call the spike protein. And here's how a virus works. It's made by a cell, released from the cell. And tiny, tiny, tiny little particle. If this was a virus um, in comparison, uh, for those of you that know the campus, um, if this was a virus, the campus itself would be the size of a host cell. So real big difference between a virus, you know, a virus and the cells that they um, go after. But they only go after because this molecule is sticky for a molecule on the surface of the host cell. In the case of uh, us, there's something called ACE2. I forget what ACE stands for. It's on a whole bunch of our cells, um, primarily uh, along a respiratory lining the virus gets in and it sticks to that. And once this protein interacts with the protein on your cells, stuff happens to get the innards of this thing into your cell. First thing, this was released from a host cell fully formed. It doesn't grow, it doesn't develop. So that's the first rule. The first thing on the list of what thing, living things do, they don't do that. Also, once it's out of the host cell, it isn't doing anything except hopefully prime to bump into another host cell and respond. But that's the only thing it will respond to. It has no ability to respond to the environment beyond, you know, falling apart, which isn't really a response. Um, so it isn't really interacting with the environment. So it's breaking that rule. It bumps into the host cell, 
It gets into your host cell. It sets, what it does is it takes over the machinery in your cell that you use to make proteins in order to make the bits and pieces of more viruses and put them together. So it turns the host cell into a virus factory. Some viruses will kill the cell doing that, overwhelm the cell. In fact, some viruses, their, their offspring can't get out of the cell until the cell dies and pops open. But that is one thing living things do that viruses do. They reproduce. They're making codes. They're making proteins. They got to put new codes into the casing. Uh, so they, they, they're doing that and cranking out lots and lots and lots and lots of them. They can evolve because they don't always make the code right. And if they make the code different, they can make a different virus. Usually it's not going to make a difference, but they can change in response to certain um, changes in conditions. Is these guys work differently than SARS-1 did? They do, they interact with our immune systems in different ways. Is it that turned out, it must have happened in the animals they jumped to before it came back into people, but it adapted those conditions and it kind of pre-set it to be good coming back into people. So it's in there and it's using your machinery. Now we keep talking about hydrochloroquine or you know all sorts of, of treatments for COVID. Already pick another virus is that there's all sorts of viral diseases. We don't really have an effective treatment uh, for pretty much any of them. A vaccine, preventing the virus from taking up shop, that's what you do. But why can't we treat for them? Because any treatment for an invader needs to poison the invader and kill it. These things, their chemistry is our chemistry. They're using our chemistry to make viruses. We don't want to poison that because it'll poison that same thing happening in cells all over your body. Is any poison that would go after their ability to make more viruses um, is probably going to kill you. What you hope for with a virus is it's doing something that our cells don't do. And in fact, it does have a weird little um, way of making proteins where it runs the code through the system and coming out of the system are long strings that are gonna be wound up into proteins. But it just makes them continually and it has a protein that it brought with us with it that uh, it's also making more of. But it's watching this string of proteins come out and go, okay, that one's done, clip, whoop, and it makes a viral protein. But it keeps going. So that one's done, clip, it's making a viral protein. That one's done. Your cells never do that. They never do that kind of, you know, snip them apart as they're made sort of thing. And so uh, somewhere somebody's trying to come up with a treatment that goes after that chemical because it shouldn't affect chemicals in your body. We do some stuff where we splice pieces of RNA together in order to make an effective code. It may turn out that any treatment that goes after the, uh, the COVID uh, protein may screw that up and really mess us up. And that's the thing, that's what, whenever you're developing drugs, you never know what your poison is maybe gonna interact with somewhere else in the body that you never even knew was potentially a problem. So, the viruses reproduce, they make more viruses, they evolve, they are not cellular. That's another thing they break. They use DNA and proteins, but they are not cellular. Um, so, People, biologists look at this and go, well, then they're not alive yet. They're not alive. Is that they, they don't have enough of the stuff on the checklist. And then me as a biologist, I'm a parasite biologist. This thing is a pretty effective parasite. As far as I'm concerned, it's alive in every way that's important to be alive. But some people go, well, you can't kill it if it's not alive. Some people go, well, that doesn't, you know, the last I interviewed them, the viruses didn't care what we labeled them is one thing you gotta keep in mind when you're taking a biology class is that we, we're people. We like to give names to stuff. We like to give categories to stuff. Is we're gonna have a whole chapter on how we do that. And so if these things are alive or not, it matters to us to some extent, but it really doesn't, doesn't change what the viruses do or don't do. Um,
trying to figure out what I did with my notes here. Ah, there we go. That's it for chapter one. So we managed to pull a couple of sections together and make them not that huge. Uh, sometimes I'll do this where I don't write much of anything down. I hope you've got you know, either an ability to go back through this and listen or copying notes down yourself is that the act of writing stuff out can be very effective in helping to learn stuff. That's one of the reasons why I make you watch me write stuff out because that helps some people um, as well as slowing me down. <laughs>